Hey kids, it's the Mr. of Fly here, hope you're well. An absolutely beautiful day today and I'm down here at uh, Barnstormer in Maidenhead. Here's uh, Aldo and Andy doing some sales deal. And uh, the bike I've come to ride today is the much awaited, uh, much anticipated uh, F850 GS. Here it is, I, I call it the baby GS, but of course there is the, uh, the 310 which is even smaller. But this is a completely new bike for 2018. So uh, lots of people ask me to have a go on this, can't wait to uh, get cracking. So without further ado, let's jump on, see how she does. Now that's the first time I've got on this bike and I have to say, first thing it strikes me, how light it feels compared to uh, other big adventure type bikes that I've ridden. And this is a big bike, being, don't you know, be under no illusions, it's a tall machine and physically it's just as big as the, uh, the 1200 GS. Well even though I'm on sort of tippy toe, it doesn't feel ponderous or super heavy, anything like that. In fact quite the opposite, it feels quite light. Wow, already... I mean, what, I've ridden it 100 yards? Feels really nice. It's uh, got a very familiar seating position to me. It's your classic GS triangle in terms of your hand position, the width of the handlebars, the way the seat feels and where, you, where your feet are on the pegs. Your legs are at basically 90 degrees. Seat's nice and comfortable. The one thing that is different about this, riding this, compared to the big 1200 GS that I'm very familiar with, is this feels very wide. My knees are considerably further apart than they would be on the 1200, which is a surprise. And then I guess after the surprise of it feeling very lightweight, the next thing that uh, slaps you in the face is the beautiful TFT screen on here. This is the same as the one on the uh, on the big GS, which is the 1200, I'll refer to it as the big GS. But it's absolutely crystal clear. It's a beautiful TFT, this. I've been lucky enough to ride a lot of bikes with TFT screens now. And I think the BMW one is the best that I've seen in terms of clarity and also size. I mean, it's just massive. It's almost like having an iPad mini stuck in front of you. Beautiful. Now this bike, as I say, is absolutely brand new for 2018. There was the old uh, F750 and 850 uh, bikes that you could get, but uh, they've been completely, well, basically ditched. And this is a new bike in every way. And it feels lovely. This one's got uh, all the electronics that you could possibly want. Uh, just in this first impressions review, I'm not going to have time to go through all of them, but I'll show you some of them, of course, and I'll talk you through when I go through the spec in the usual way. Uh, this has also got the uh, quick shifter, the Gear Assist Pro, as BMW call it, which is uh, up and down quick shifting. And uh, going slowly at the moment, let's just give that try down shifting through the box. It's going to second. Yeah, it works really nicely on here. I've got it on my uh, big GS, and mine's a little bit clunky. Mine's an early incarnation, I guess. This is a lot smoother than that. Right, what I want to do is get out of the way of this vehicle, get on a bit of a faster road, because I'm curious to see what the weather protection is like on this, because it's got this tiny screen, which I have to admit I don't like the look of. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what the airflow is like when I get on a bit of a faster road, so let's go and uh, join a bit of dual carriageway. Now, this is a tall old bike, actually. I'm right on my tippy toes. I'm five foot eight, and uh, this is a tall machine, but this is with the standard seat. It does come, you can get a lower seat, and you can get a low suspension option as well so uh, don't let the height of it put you off that can be easily sorted right let's try a little bit of a faster road see what she's like from a wind protection point of view unfortunately it seems to be an extremely busy day today so as I mentioned the bike comes as standard with this really small screen it doesn't uh, it's not adjustable in any way so it offers very minimal wind protection and I'm getting quite a bit of buffet the front of the uh, front of the bike is quite large, so you get quite a lot of protection on the lower half of your body. But kind of think of it as a naked bike, I think, and then you won't be uh, disappointed with the wind protection. Although I'm getting quite a lot of wind actually in my sort of around the sides of my chest. It's not unpleasant. It's no worse than a naked bike, of course. And if you've ridden naked bikes, you'll know that you soon get used to it. In terms of power, it's got absolutely plenty. It's a real shame this van won't pull over so I can overtake him. No lack of power. These bikes now, these bikes that are coming out with these uh, slightly smaller engines in the sort of 800, 900cc range, these adventure and touring bikes, for me, really hits a sweet spot. You really don't need more power in the real world. Super comfortable. So yeah, high speeds on faster roads work to treat, no problems there. Okay, let's see how she handles a bit more then in a more of an urban environment. 
As I mentioned before, it's a tall old bike, so you get a great view from it. And if you're in, you know, traffic situation, then you'd be able to see what was happening up ahead because you are looking over the traffic, which is quite nice. I think if I was somebody getting one of these who'd like myself short in stature, then I would definitely get the lowered seat because uh, filtering and so on, I want to make sure I can get my feet securely on the ground. And as I say, I'm just on tippy toe on this one. So on the other hand, there are a lot of tall people about, aren't they? So if you're a bigger person, this bike will suit you down to the ground. So glad now that manufacturers seem to be taking notice of the fact that people do come in different sizes. There's so many of them now, you can buy lowered seats, lowered suspension versions and so on. Whereas, you know, five years ago, you got what you got and that was that. Ooh, there's another BMW man just here, let's see if he nods. Hello? Yes he did, and a smile, that makes a change. Perhaps it's because he saw I was on a, on a GS. Suspension wise, feels lovely, this has got the uh, electronic suspension on it, set nice and soft at the moment. And just for these sort of everyday roads, which are quite bumpy around here, soaks up everything really nicely. This TFT is really impressive. You flick through all the trip stuff very easy at the top with an up flip on the menu button. And if you can see that. And then you've got the various settings. If you go to the, uh, the down menu, which you can whip through with the whiz wheel. Like so. Really nice the way they do all the animations on that. It's worthy of a video itself probably, just that uh, just that screen. If you've not seen it before, do check out my... Um, I did a video actually on the TFT on the GS Adventure, which is very much the same. Go and have a look at that if you want to learn more about the TFT specifically. Well, I just want to check the brakes. Back brake works okay. Not too much behind. Let's just check the front brake. Yeah, front brake is fine. Not stupid stopping power, but absolutely adequate. No issue there at all. What a beautiful day in downtown Marlow. Lovely little town. This always, always busy though. So actually a good, uh, good place to bring a bike and see how she handles a bit of traffic. Mirrors on here while we're talking practical aspects are the uh, standard BMW ones. These are identical to the mirrors that I've got on my GS and they appear on lots of the BMW range. Work really well. They look a bit um, spindly perhaps. But the upside of that is they do give you a good view behind, and that's the most important thing with mirrors, of course. Oh, what a beautiful day. It's one of those glad-to-be-alive days. This engine, the big old parallel twin, sounds really nice. It's got a standard pipe on this. But it does sound like it means business. Told you it was always busy down here. Especially when the sun comes out. We're going to have to take an opportunity. So, yeah, great view over the traffic here. It doesn't feel top heavy or ponderous, anything like that. Slow speed riding is lovely, no issues with the fueling, I'm not feeling a jerky throttle or anything. Oh, hello. Great views in Marlow as well. Not just the architecture. Oh, hello. Okay, that's enough sightseeing. Let me uh, go and find ourselves a quiet spot somewhere so I can do a walk around and talk you through the specs of this bike, show you a bit more what it's about. Okay, just a bit more sightseeing then. Look at this, beautiful spot, complete angler, lovely hotel down there. Great place for weddings if you think they're getting married. Very expensive though, but you get what you pay for in life, don't you? The engine on here feels lovely and smooth actually. The BMW boffins have done a good job balancing out the vibrations given it is a big old twin. It feels and sounds lovely. Man, there are so many good bikes in this category these days. I've recently ridden the new Triumph Tiger 800. Even the uh, a bike that's in a maybe a slightly lesser category, but still to be considered if you're thinking of a touring type bike, the Tracer 900 GT I rode recently as well. All very similar bikes offering very similar things, and uh, it's a very difficult choice. What I would say about the BMW is it does feel like a solid quality machine. Not the others don't, but it feels a bit more serious, I think, than the others. It certainly feels a lot bigger. It doesn't feel any less agile, though. It's none the worse for it. Might actually make it a bit of a better proposition for touring. Handling-wise, it feels remarkably light on the corners, actually. It's a really nice machine to chuck around a bit. Because it's quite tall, it feels like you can really lean it over. It's a really confidence-inspiring machine. I tell you what, I'm well used to my uh, GS1200 
and this feels no less powerful I have to say. The big 1200 puts out something like 125 brake horsepower, I think this is near a 95 and we'll go through the specs in a moment. But it doesn't feel down on power at all. Alright, having been to one of my favourite places, Marlow, let's go to another of my favourite places. This is uh, the airfield at White Waltham, the one that I fly from. Hopefully there'll be a bit of space in the overflow car park. I can do a bit of a walk around and talk you through the spec of the bike. Oh, a beautiful day for flying. Right, let's just stick her over here. Let's put her at the front, why not? Easy to turn, slow speed, lovely. Great turning circle as well. Alrighty, it's like neutral. Easy to get the stand down. There we go. Wow, she is a big old beast. There we have it, the F850 GS. I mean, it looks properly like a GS, doesn't it? They've done a really nice job, I think, on restyling the bike. It certainly rides beautifully, but it also, it looks really good. Alrighty, uh, let's get the other camera out then. I'll talk you through the spec. Annoyingly, a white van comes and parks right by the bike, so that's a bit of a nuisance. Anyway, here we go, the F850 GS then. So let's start off with uh, the important bit, the engine. So here it is, it's, uh, as I say, a uh, twin cylinder unit. 853cc uh, inline twin puts out 95 horsepower 8250 rpm uh, so usable power where it should be torque wise maximum is at uh, 6500 rpm and that's 92 newton meters and uh, as i say this is not a bike that you you know you ride feeling what this bike needs is more power uh, brakes wise uh, on the front uh, we've got uh, We've got little Brembo calipers there, look, four pot calipers on twin discs, these are dual 305mm discs. You'll notice that front wheel's spoked, uh, it is actually a tubeless spoked wheel, which is uh, clever stuff and uh, much more convenient I always think. We're talking about brakes on the back here, single disc, uh, with a, a Bybre baby Brembo uh, brake on the back of that one, and that's a 265mm disc there, and they seem to work absolutely fine. Suspension wise, Let's come down the front, Four, uh, 43mm upside down uh, forks on here, uh, and on the back we've got what uh, what BMW call a rear central WAD spring strut adjustable preload and rebound, there we go, <laughs> this one, I think is the sport model, it's got the dynamic ESA as you can see here, this gadget here, uh, gives you the clever electronic suspension, it feels really nice in practice. Uh, seat height, mentioned it's already, uh, you know, it's a high seat, it's a standard, uh, 860 millimetres minimum, and that's what I'm riding on at the moment, but as I say, there is a low seat and a low suspension uh, option available. Weight of this wet is 229 kilograms. Now, wet for such a big bike, that in my mind makes this quite a light bike, actually, because uh, it is physically large. Uh, so without the fuel, you're looking at, you know, probably around about 200. Uh, so yeah, feels nice and light, much lighter than it looks. Tank capacity on this, big old tank, or it looks big, it actually carries 15 litres. Uh, I imagine you're going to get a reasonable range out of that. Electronics wise, well it's laden. It's got that amazing TFT that I showed you just now. Uh, obviously not switched on at the moment, 6.5 inch TFT, it's got connectivity to your phone, uh, nav functions, you name it. Uh, it's got switchable ABS, it's got uh, all the lighting on it is LED, so LED rear light indicators, front light, etc. It's got dynamic traction control, uh, it's got riding modes pro on this model, it's got rain, road, dynamic, enduro and enduro pro. Uh, it's got uh, gear shift assist pro as I mentioned which is the up and down uh, quick shifter we can see the little gadget that enables that there heated grips uh, daylight running lights you name it it's got it thrown at it price wise for the standard bike nine thousand four hundred pounds if you want the GS Sport which is to say I think is this one with those extras that I talked about ten thousand six hundred and fifty so um, that's a pretty good value I reckon for uh, for a bike that's this well specced up comes in various color schemes as well as a rally one which is probably the one I'd have and you can get loads of accessories as you can imagine uh, including an Akrapovic exhaust and all the luggage you could possibly want alrighty uh, I think that's probably all there is to say about it let's uh, jump back on then and uh, summarize my thoughts on the bike typical uh, stop doing the walk around white van goes away how annoying is that anyway never mind uh, so there we go that's the spec of the bike I love when you turn this on uh, this uh, goes through a fantastic warm-up routine Look, I've seen this before as I say on the uh, big GS but it never tires that's just a, an amazing thing never gets old okay it does sound lovely this bike all right, nothing around. What a lovely summer's day. Makes me think I should come back with my flying kit. 
Right, so what have I learnt then on this uh, brief, all too brief trip on the BMW F850 GS? Well, I've learnt that I like it very much actually, it looks good. Uh, and it rides really, really nicely, and it's got—I can't see that it's missing much from the uh, from its bigger bike to be, you know, its bigger bike brother, the GS1200. To be honest with you, it's got—I uh, think it's got pretty much all the options that's got, with maybe the exception of lean angle sensitive uh, traction control and ABS. But certainly everything else seems to be here. Got you know things like the lovely TFT, the clever suspension, etc. I guess the only thing about it that. Uh, that I don't like, but is easily fixed and changed, is this uh, is this windscreen. I don't think it looks very good, and also, it, as I mentioned before, it doesn't offer much in the way of protection. But I'm sure there are aftermarket versions available. If indeed BMW don't offer one themselves, I'd like the you know a proper size screen on there. I think that would help. It's not adjustable either, so whatever you do with the proper size one, that's what you've got. But I think that would help the way the bike looks, and also be practical on uh, faster roads for longer touring. But yeah, really, really nice bike. I like this one a lot. I must just say thanks to the guys at Barnstormer. You saw their um, showroom at the start of the video. Great bunch of guys down there, lovely showroom. Good place to go and stop if you're in the area and you're just having a ride around. Couldn't help doing that, oh that's juvenile. Um, but they do dish out free coffee and biscuits, so uh, that's, <laughs> that's always worth a go. And of course they've got all the BMW range if you want to have a go on any bikes, including this very one. Have a chat to the guys there, Aldo and co. I'm sure they'll sort you out. So if I are in the market for a sort of, let's call it for want of a better word, middleweight touring stroke adventure bike, what would I go for? Would it be this? Well, this would certainly be towards the top of the list. I've ridden now, as I mentioned before, a number of these types of bikes, including the Multistrada 950 and the Tiger 800. Uh, the Multistrada 950, I'm afraid, would be at the bottom of the list of those three, because that just felt a bit top heavy to me, and it's very expensive. This one feels much more high-tech, much more planted than the Tiger. The Tiger perhaps feels a little bit more, um, maybe a little bit more agile, but this one isn't lacking agility. But this has got much nicer electronics features. I personally prefer things, for example, like the TFT screen on this. I prefer over the Triumph TFT screen. So I guess it's down to a matter of what you like the look of um, and, and what you like to ride. So you're going to have to give them a try, I'm afraid. I can't give you a definitive answer. If I were going for one, this would be, I think, in the top two, I'm also thinking in my mind Tracer 900 GT, which is another great bike, uh, and a little bit cheaper, uh, but not much in it. So many good choices. We do indeed live in a golden age of motorcycles. Okay, hope that's been of some interest. Look forward to speaking to you next time. Until then, this has been the Missenden Flyer. Cheerio. We're working with our partners Speedo Angels throughout July to give you 20% off the entire range of dashboard screen protectors and get yourself one extra free fitting kit when you use the discount code MISSENDEN. Just go to www.speedo-angels.com.